Hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, if you're seeing this portion of the video, you are seeing this on my YouTube channel. And this is a TikTok live I've done. And what I do in the beginning is I sit like this just for a few moments and allow some people an opportunity to show up. And there's somebody right there. Good evening. Good evening. Hope everybody's well. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. How are you? How are you? So while there's a few of you on here right now tonight, uh, just listening initially, I want to show my appreciation for you. Uh, you guys have been amazing. Uh, within four weeks, you guys have, um, we're almost at 50,000 followers on the page. I am very well. Good evening. Hey, Spooky, how are you? Uh, and what I wanted to do tonight is I wanted to come on here. Good evening, Dragon, and, and talk to you. You know, I, I try my best to respond to the comments uh, until it gets just to, to be too overwhelming. And I'm making my way through the private messages that have been sent to me, but there's a lot of them. So I really wanted to come on tonight and just have an opportunity to talk with you, see what's going on uh, in your life. And if there's anything that you wanted to talk about, if there's anything that's going on in your life that you, you know, want to share. Uh, good evening, Veronica. Good evening, Smooth. Uh, so seriously, if there's anything going on, hi, I saw my first video of you today and loved it. Thank you. Is that KE21? KE, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that uh, pr properly, but thank you so much. Uh, and I can't seem to get motivated or creative. Excellent. This is really good. That's, that's a really good thing. So, so let's just talk about that. Let's start right there. Motivated, uh, and, or creative. Well, I could tell you one thing for sure. There is not a person on the planet that can motivate you. The only thing that will ever motivate you is yourself. But what you, uh, can do is inspire. Inspiration can motivate somebody. Uh, when we feel inspired, we usually uh, create our own motivation. And for me, I'm a musician. Uh, I, I do other things and stuff. And I can completely relate to this. You know, there are times where I've had to record or do things like that. And uh, take your time, Spooky. I'll be here. And, you know, you just don't feel like doing it. You're procrastinating. Uh, and, and the best thing that I suggest when you're feeling like that, when you're feeling motivated, uh, unmotivated, sorry, and you're you're not feeling very creative, but you know you have that desire inside you. You you want to get that going inside you. Start surrounding yourself with the things that you love. Uh, start really forcing yourself to listen to the music you love. Uh, just starting engaging the things that really make you feel good and happy, and start to to distance yourself from whatever it is that's making you feel more kind of somber and down but the best thing you could do is whatever inspires you for me it's it's movies or good uh, um, good movies and really good music sometimes uh, that really inspires me i get ins very inspired by meditation just going deep within a lot of times but surround yourself with what inspires you and um and uh and and just keep going with that uh manny i most certainly did my fiance lied to me for the past three years. I finally broke it off. I feel so alone. Listen, uh, hello, Australia. Um, alone is okay. Alone is okay. Yeah, and, and mislead. If you have any more, if there's anything spinning in your head, just we'll keep it going. I'm just going to keep going back and forth here. Uh, look, being alone is is not a bad thing, especially when you're coming out of a very traumatic experience. The last thing you need to do right now is getting to another relationship where you're distracting yourself from your pain and hurt because you're then carrying it into this relationship. So you're lonely right now. You're alone. You're going to have a lot more time to yourself because you're not with this person anymore. You're going to feel boredom. Boredom is okay. Boredom means You've got nothing to do or nothing you physically want to do, and that's okay. You're allowed to do that. It's your life. So you can take that opportunity. You can take this alone time, this alone feeling, and really reflect inside. Observe this relationship that you're just coming out of. Don't revisit it emotionally. When you think about the worst experience between you and your ex, don't consciously time travel to that event, relive it, and bring that fear and anxiety and hurt and pain today. Look at that relationship now as an outsider. See how both parties contributed to things happening and making mistakes. Uh, I'm not blaming you at all. 
Um, but you know, there's always more than one side to a story. We know that that's a fact, right? So, so, and anytime I talk to somebody about a relationship when it's one sided, I equally in my mind, just for, for, for my own purposes, always even the field. I'm not saying you lied, but I'm sure if I spoke to your ex-husband that he would say, well, she did this and this and this, and we would play this game forever and ever. So I split the field in half. It's even right now, but that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is now you're away from the relationship, you're alone, and you've got this opportunity. Don't sit in that hurt and pain. You are free. You are free from something that was hurting you and making you feel negative, uh, probably narcissistic behavior, belittling and demeaning. And most importantly, if you were being lied to, then that means it's constantly invalidating you. Every time you express, I feel like this or something's going on or I know, no, you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. That is completely, completely uh, uh, messing with you. Hold on. I want to see if this is the same person here. Okay. It is. I'm going to get there. Okay. So the best thing you can do is distance yourself from him. Observe this relationship when, when you're away from him, take that time to be alone and not just this relationship, your entire of life, reflect on it, observe on it, observe it, try and, and disconnect yourself from the pain uh, and the hurt and trauma and find your own inner balance. You just said he beat you when you broke up with him. Then the best thing in the world has happened for you. Being away from this person is the best thing that you can possibly do uh, uh, to be a word away from this person. And again, I don't care what you've done in the relationship. I don't care what he's, he, he's done. I don't care if you've punched him in the face and if somebody goes, well, if women want equal rights and she punches me, I'm going to hit her back. That's asinine. That's completely asinine. You don't, look, I don't believe in hitting each other, violence. I boxed. I, I'm a black belt in martial arts. I've done all these things. I've punched people, but I don't believe in, in, in physically hurting another person uh, with that intent of anger and rage. And, and as a man who grew up in a home with a father who beat his mother and, and seen things like that growing up. If I ever saw a guy put his hands on a woman, trust me, as peaceful, loving, and I am, his ass would be on the floor grinding against the asphalt. I promise you that. So, so the best thing has happened to you by getting away from that person. Um, can you see my tattoos? Uh, well, this one is, is comedy and drama. It has nothing to do with the band Motley Crue, and it has nothing to do with the uh, gang uh, Los Salidos. I know they have the same tattoo. Uh, it's comedy and drama, and that's exactly what it represents, comedy and drama. Uh, this one is, uh, is it's really big. You can't really even see the whole thing because it, it goes over my back and, and stuff like that. Uh, it was originally a, a, a heart with a knife through it that me and three friends who we don't associate with anymore, and I had it covered up. And I have a, a dragon, uh, a, a dragon, just a upper torso. You're not going to be able to see it, but just the upper torso with its wings out, uh, a dragon on my back. But this one here goes uh, uh, over my chest here, and it literally goes across the, the middle of my back and, and across and down a little bit. It's, it's pretty big. Uh, and and, and uh, a quick story is, we don't have to get into why, but it was about 30 days, uh, they said about 30 to 40 days of tattooing with outlining and coloring would be the proper way to do that with healing. And I hired the tattoo artist to come to my house uh, three days in a row for 16 hours each day. And I let myself be tortured uh, uh, over three days getting this. And it was probably the worst, one of the worst painful experiences of my life. And look, if you could see those two little spots right there where there's no ink, uh, it got to a point where it was so unbearably painful. After the third day, my arm was just raw, swollen up. And this part of your skin is just so insanely sensitive. Uh, he was doing it, and I was like, that's it, we're done. And he's like, no, I'm literally almost done, 20 seconds. And I said, no, 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 no. 
we're done. I said, that, that thing's not touching me again right now. And he goes, no, dude, I'll literally, I said, you put that needle on me right now. I promise you, you're going to crawl out of my house. And we, he started laughing. We started laughing. He was like, okay, man. He said, all right, that, that's fine. You're done. Um, but it was just a rite of passage for me. It, it, it did. It was just a rite of passage. Whoa. Let me see this one here. Uh, uh, my father beat my mom and brothers and sisters. I was nine years old when I kidnapped my siblings. So my dad couldn't hurt us anymore. He's on the national list of child abuse. Wow, that's brutal. Uh, my father, my mother and father, uh, he grew up in the Bronx. Uh, she grew up in Queens. I had an older sister. She uh, committed suicide. And I just, the, there's a video on my page, actually. Uh, I just talked about that. Uh, Can the dead communicate? Um, and uh, my sister was five and a half years older than me. So I'm 53 now. So yeah, she'd be almost 59. Lorraine was her name. And, uh, uh, you know, it's interesting. I've always, my sister growing up, uh, my sister and I were very, 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 you know, fire and ice, water and oil kind of relationship very sporadic sparse uh, moments of of good times with each other it, it was a lot of uh she was not nice to me when i was a little kid she was very abusive very mean uh very manipulative and deceiving and things like that and you know i often wonder if if she experienced any type of abuse because my father Although he, he was extremely horrible to my mother, cheating on her and beating her and, and stuff like that. He never beat me or my sister uh, in person. The abuse I got from my father was complete verbal mental abuse. I mean, this was a guy, you know, who just, I, I, I could never, he was just so broken that he wasn't the kind of father to inspire their children to be better than him. He was the kind of broken man-child who felt it was better to belittle and demean uh, a little boy so he doesn't become a better man. And he's not with us anymore. And he died a very, very, very miserable person. Uh, very, very alone and very broken. So, you know, and, and it's okay if anybody goes, oh, I'm so sorry. It's I, I, I completely said goodbye, made amends and let him go, and he died that night. It was a very interesting thing. Uh, uh, he wasn't in the hospital or anything. I called him on the phone, tried to get him a few times. Finally, I just left a message and said, you don't have to pick up the phone. Don't worry about picking up the phone. I just want to call you and let you know I can't do this anymore, Pop. I've been trying for a long time with you. I love you, and I'm not going to call anymore. I'm going to let you go. And if you really want to leave here, when you go to sleep tonight, just lay there, close your eyes, and every time you have a thought, remember, it's not your thought. Focus on that nothingness. Keep falling into that nothingness, letting yourself fade away, and, and you'll be gone. And I got a call uh, two days later from the guy across the street who would come and take out his garbage and go shopping for him in South Carolina that uh, I called him. He played the message uh, for my father on Tuesday and that Wednesday morning, he came to to get my dad, and he was dead. So whatever I said to him, you know, he heard it. And it was interesting, because he I had seen him about two or three years ago. My, me and my older son, Kyle, went down to see him. We spent two days uh, at a hotel visiting him, uh, standing in his kitchen talking for two days, pretty much. And and uh, he, he said, he said, I don't know, you know, why I'm still alive. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on every kind of medication. I can barely hear. I can barely walk. I can barely see. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to die. I don't want to be here. And, and it was finally about a year and a half later, uh, that I had, I left that message from and, and he died that night. So I came to the conclusion that it wasn't him holding on to resolve something. It was, it was most likely me holding on to his, his energy, not letting it go because of the hopes of, of repairing that relationship and having something that I had with him for, you know, this, this span of time between, I would say, uh, yeah, I, I, I would say between, I mean, it was okay growing up when they got divorced, seeing him 
you know, every other Sunday or whatever the hell it was. Uh, it was supposed to be every every Sunday, but that's not how it worked out. Um, but there was this period between 14 and I would say uh, well into my 30s that we were very close, you know, and then we fell apart and stuff. So uh, anyway, I, I'm not sure what the point of that was, but, you know, it, it, it's okay when, when, when you distance yourself from people who are hurting you and, and you most certainly must take care of yourself and protect your energy uh, and, and protect your sanity and stuff. So it, it's definitely, uh, it, it, it didn't resonate with him. I appreciate that. You're right. He heard it. It didn't. Uh, and it was a beautiful message. It really was a beautiful message. I said to him, uh, uh, the neighbor, the guy said to me, that when he heard the message, he was like, <laughs> he, uh, his first response was, uh, ah, son of a bitch, what the hell is he talking about? And then he had him play it again, and he listened to it again, and didn't say anything the second time he listened to it. Uh, but yeah, you know, what, what can you do? <clears throat> Robin, the Francesco, have I written a book? Actually, I have. Uh, I've written two books. And you actually can read the first one right now uh, completely free. You don't have to buy it or anything like that. You can buy the paperback online. But if uh, when we're done here, hang out, don't leave. Uh, um, hold on, 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 hold on. All these colors. Uh, <laughs> if I, sorry, the link uh, on my TikTok profile, there's that link tree link. If you click on that and it opens up, it's going to say The Book of New Light. That's my first book. Uh, it's, it's I channeled 55 questions out there, the most often asked questions we ask every day throughout our lives, and I wrote down the answers that I received. So uh, uh, if you want to read it, click the Linktree link. It will take you to that section of my website. Uh, scroll past the paperback. You'll see you can purchase the paperback. There's reviews and stuff. Scroll past that. Then it says uh, download the PDF. Uh, I literally took the PDF and uploaded it to Google Drive. I don't want your email address. I don't want your money. No data collection. No nothing. You literally click that link and it's going to say uh, this file has not been scanned for viruses. Download anyway and just open it or it may just open up right on you. But don't worry about it. There's no viruses. And yeah, that's my first book. So I've written the first book. I've written a second book, which uh, I'm probably going to be releasing over the next couple of weeks. It's, it's ready to go. Uh, uh, and, and I've actually started working on uh, a third book, which is completely different than the first two. But it's everything that we could possibly uh, want to do. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so, so here we go. I got a bunch of colors here. What's the topic? The topic is, first of all, hi, Tristan anything uh if there's anything going on with you hello vivian uh welcome if there's anything going on in your life anything you're thinking about anything you're feeling wondering about and you want to talk about uh, if you feel comfortable open it up okay so you know what a whole bunch of you are talking about colors so let me show you something hold on stay right there don't go away i promise i'm right here so when i did that uh, uh video about what color do you see there is a video, again, the Linktree link, uh, I'm not trying to promote anything, the Linktree link also links to my YouTube channel where I upload all of these TikTok lives to my uh, uh, YouTube channel. A couple of weeks ago, I did a live on, on uh, energetic energies, the colors of energetic energies, and some people call it uh, the angelic realms, angel colors, and things like that. I did a live on that. So that video is available on my YouTube channel. But really, if, if you're wondering about the colors you're seeing, what that was referencing is, is when you sit and close your eyes and, and you, uh, you know, protect your energy. I am closed off to all malevolence, deceit, and evilness. I am only open up to receive uh, kindness and compassion and information of unity and love, right? So you open yourself up, you protect yourself. When you do that and you, is there any energies that want to communicate with me? I have the frequencies. It's called clairaudience. I can hear those frequencies. But you'll start to see colors in your mind's eye or you'll start to think of a color, pink and blue and things. And these could represent specific types of energies that are trying to connect and communicate with you. It's the same thing when you're standing in a crowd of people 
and you say something and somebody goes, oh my God, I was just thinking of that or vice versa. They say something and you're like, oh my God, I was just thinking of that. One of you picked up each other's thoughts and frequencies. It happens. And it's sometimes why sometimes you're standing there and you go, why am I thinking this? I feel fine. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I thinking this way? It's because you're picking up something that's around you or you're picking up or receiving something that's being sent to you. So if you want to look what these colors may mean to you personally, you can search on Google. You can, uh, uh, and if you want to use the term angelic, you can type in angel colors uh, and you can type in angel color blue uh, and you'll get, you know, uh, Archangel Michael and, and things like uh, uh so, and this, this is a book that goes through uh, many, many colors uh, of the, the angel colors, but this is a really beautiful book. It's got great meditations in it and things like that, and it's actually called the Angel Bible. I know it's going to be backwards, but it's called the Angel Bible, and it talks about all of those energies. And I know a lot of times people get a little turned off about the word angel. They perceive it as, as some religious type thing. Uh, uh, it, it, it's a word for uh, ethereal, celestial energy, just another level of energy. We're here in the physical realm as humans right now. We are a celestial energy of the ethereal realm. Within that ethereal realm and beyond the universe and in the multiverse, there are many different types of energies and beings, and we refer to them as angels and aliens and interdimensional beings and spirits and all sorts of things like that. So... The name of my first book is The Book of New Light. The Book of New Light. And don't buy it. I mean, if you really want the paperback, if if you're into paperbacks, that's fine. You can. But you could just click the link tree on my profile and uh, scroll down to Book of New Light. And then when that page opens, scroll to the bottom and click the Google Drive link. And it'll be right there. Uh, what? <laughs> um, so, so, okay, so there we go. So, so Jay, why do people look at me crazy in public? I feel like they look at me like I'm a threat. Well, I don't know, Tristan. Um, <laughs> they look at you like you're a threat. I'm not laughing. I don't mean that humorously. Uh, well, I could tell you personally for myself, uh, uh, people oftentimes think I'm angry uh, one, because I, I come from the projects in Queens, New York. So I have, uh, uh, I, I've lived in Connecticut for 26 years now. Oh no, 27, 28 years. Um, <laughs> but I still have that New York accent. Uh, the other thing is I always, my eyes are always like this. I always, I like, kind of bring my brow together, you know, like this. Uh, I'm always like this kind of a, a look. And then I talk, and I talk loud, too. You know, I grew up, as I said, in the projects, right between uh, LaGuardia and Kennedy Airport, the LIE Expressway, uh, Casino Boulevard, Jewel Avenue, a very busy, noisy neighborhood. So we, you know, yelled. We always talk loud. I grew up in a household where everybody screamed. My mother, my father, my sister, me. We just absolutely screamed at each other. And just, it was just the most insane environment you can possibly imagine uh well no my, probably not as 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 bad as you can imagine but it was it was bad enough so i i talk loud i talk very coarse at times i have this kind of look so sometimes when i'm talking to somebody and i'm like look you could do this don't let this person do this to you they're like why are you mad at me i'm like what look i'm not mad at you what are you talking about and they're like, you you sound so mad so, so I, I don't know, Tristan, you know, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on in your life. You could be, there could be some fear, anxiety, energy, uh, anger in you and people are feeling it, sensing it. Uh, I, I don't know, but, but I, I would, I would love to know, you know, what you think. Why do you think it is? There we go. Why, let's do that. While we're sitting here, why do you think that they look at you as a threat, Tristan? And I'm going to just scroll. And that's the bottom. So there's nothing else there. I don't know what time it is, but that's fine. Uh, everyone always thinks you're angry when you're focused and working. Yeah, it definitely does. It definitely does. Um, 
uh, and that's another thing, you know, uh, me too, when I'm, I'm focused on doing something, I'm very in it, I'm like, shh, don't bother me, just let me do what I'm doing, um, but they pick up my vibe, you know, I, that's why I asked at, that about Tristan, is, is, I, I'm just wondering, you know, what's going on with Tristan, that people are, are, are thinking and sensing that from you, uh, if you don't feel like talking about it, Tristan, that's okay, oh, here we go, whoa, 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 whoa. Your attitude is unexpected. Okay. So people you're interacting with or a way you're presenting yourself. I mean, you are uh, are saying right here, it's, 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 it's the attitude you're projecting. So, I mean, are, are you trying to present a, a, an attitude for a reason? Are you uh, trying to make people look at you differently? Are you trying to intimidate people? Why? Because of the way you act. Well, you're you're obviously answering your own question. Your attitude and the way you act. So people look at you like you're crazy. So what are you doing, no man? Is it violent or are you dancing and singing and, and having fun? I mean, if you're dancing and singing and having fun and stuff, I, I mean, then I wouldn't care what it is, but... Um... Yeah, so, okay, so you're not, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry if I kind of misinterpreted where we were going with that, but look, you know, I, I tell people all the time, one of the reasons I'm as happy as I am and, and can really connect deep within beyond the noise and uh, labeling things, like I don't look around the room and go coffee cup chair, I just see and observe, is because I don't care what people think anymore. You know, I, I grew up being one of those people, uh, always being concerned with what, what other people think, what their expectations of me were. And, and I got to a point in life where I was like, no, 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 no more. I know I am something from someplace else and I'm here for something else. I, I, I don't understand this. Why are we doing this? What's going on? So I stopped caring a long time ago what people thought of me, what they thought about what I was wearing, saying. Um, and, and, and so Tristan, so here to, to move off of that, as long as you are happy, as long as you are happy and you are treating people kindly with compassion. I always say, uh, since I'm a kid, treat people the way you'd like to be treated. And, and I know some people like to be treated badly, but I hope that you interpret that as express kindness and compassion and equality and freedom. We're always going to judge. Listen, listen, this is super important. We are always going to judge. We're always going to judge. It's it's hot and cold, left, right, up and down, should I, shouldn't I. We always have that judgment, that evaluation, that choice. So we are always going to judge a person and a situation. But what we could do, what we could do is we can judge from a place of sympathy and kindness as opposed to a place of harshness and cruelty. Uh, instead of, oh, why are they like that? Why do they feel that way? You can interpret that as, Oh, I feel bad that they don't understand there's a better way and another way. Um, so so don't care what people are, are thinking about you, but really try to live your life uh, kindness and compassion, projecting that out. And I say this redundantly all the time. You know, we've heard all the lessons in the past. And, and one of the best sayings that you hear often is be the change you want to see in the world. And that means that, you know, don't expect others to be a certain way. Don't expect other people to uh, perform and do things based on your hypothetical imaginary thought of how things should go on to it. Don't hold them uh, and value them based on the outcome of your expect expectations. Uh, expectations are very dangerous things. And as far as living under somebody else's expectations, you have lived your entire life bending to the will and perspective of your parents and your friends and your girlfriends and boyfriends and your teachers and your bosses. And the entire problem is you have taken every single emotional uh, 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 event, every single action and event that has caused you to have an emotional response, one that imprints your mind so much that you identify with those things. 
that's become who you are. I'm a dad, I'm a mom, I'm a parent, I'm a worker, I'm pissed, I'm happy, uh, I, my life sucks because this happened to me and this happened to me and when is this going to happen to me and why doesn't this happen to me because it happens to them, when is it my turn? We can't live our lives like that. We can't because what we're doing is we're taking every single thing that we have inside, every single thing that we were born with, every single power and strength that that beautiful little happy child was born into the world with and we've just filled it with all this noise and information and we believe and perceive that that's who we are and that's what our responsibility is and and feeling this way is our purpose and it is not it is not this is all for us to experience there are all lessons every painful experience the hurt my mother father sister have caused me the mistakes that i have done for myself the pain I have caused for others, every single one of those things are lessons. I can either identify with them as pain and let them inhibit me and hold me back and live in those moments consciously, or I can realize what happened, that it was my fault. Well, not my fault. It, it was it was a mistake I made and a mistake they made. You know, my mother abused me, my father, my sister. Uh, I've had girlfriends who've cheated on me, all these things, right? I've had fights and things. And I don't look at the people who have hurt me as doing something wrong to me. I, I forgive them. I love every single one of them because I understand like me and like you, they were lost. They were broken. They were manipulated. They were deceived. I, I forgive them. I love every single one of them because I understand like me and like you, they were lost. They were broken. They were manipulated. They were deceived. They were growing up and existing in a world somebody else designed, right? So they never had the chance to heal and observe and connect. Uh, like we are right now, and to understand these things, so I can forgive them. And as far as myself, these things happening to me, they didn't happen to me. They happened to my body. They happened to my vision. They happened to my uh, sight, sound, and my senses. And they are in the memory of my mind. But I don't identify with them because I stand behind that. I, I stand behind that. I'm the energetic awareness that is experiencing these things at this point in my life. And it's taken a while to get there. As I was saying before, when I look around the room, book, camera, uh, stand, light, I don't book, camera, stand, light. I observe what's here without label. I wake up in the morning and I, I say thank you. Before I go to sleep at night, I say thank you. And I truly, 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 in every single breath I can possibly tell you, I do my best to let life unfold before me naturally, without expectation and without resistance, without fighting it. Uh, if you just open yourself up and look forward, stop facing the pain behind you and turn towards the road in front of you, the universe creation unfolds before you. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be anything or go anywhere and life will present itself to you continuously and effortlessly. And you can be here to experience and see all of those moments in the present moment, in the present moment. But if you're living in the pain of the past, the fear and anxiety of the past, the fear and anxiety of the uncertainty of now, if you're projecting that fear and anxiety in an uncertainty into the unknown future, you're even manipulating your own celestial higher awareness. You're not receiving those beautiful messages because you're projecting fear and anxiety into that future uh, instead of looking at it as right now. Think right now. When you were a little child, inside you, when you something bad was happening, something inside you, there was that little guidance, that knowing that your life was going to be okay. You didn't second guess and cast self-doubt on that knowing inside as, as much as you do today. So as you were a child, you had that guidance. And if you've listened to that inner guidance, even though we de deviate from it, right? We dance in the darkness. We sing in the light. We go back and dance in the darkness. We sing in the light. We try to be the balance in the middle and we teeter-totter, right? But as long as you listen to that guidance, you've ended up where you are right now. And I know absolutely that when I was a child, that 
voice inside of me, just do this, go left, don't talk to them, go that way. It's me now. It's the way I connect and communicate with my younger self when I meditate, just as I sit and listen and close my eyes and receive the information of the higher awareness. And that could be me tomorrow, 10 years, 100 years from now, 1,000 years from now. Uh, so I let myself open up and then I go beyond. I let myself go beyond the timeline of birth and death. And I just let that entire infinite energy just create that absolute I'm not going to cry tonight. Mm -mm. But this is why I do this every single day. I, I, I come on here because I make videos every day trying to, to show you that you've got the strength and the courage to not only get past your pain and, and hurt, but to learn from it. You are more stronger and amazing than you can ever possibly imagine. And all of those, those shit, all of those dreams you have inside, all of the things that you hope for and pray for and, and wish, you can do most of them. You can do most of them. You've got to stop second-guessing, you know, and casting self-doubt on your inner guidance. You've got to protect yourself and distance yourself from what is hurting you and projecting negative energy around you. You've got to start discipline, spending the time to go within and, and reassess and reflect on your life and heal uh, you've got to eat better. You've got to take care of your body. If you are not eating properly, then your heart sensor, your mind, your body's not running properly. You cannot pro absolutely process and, and run this vehicle, this vessel uh, properly if it's not connecting and functioning right. So you really want to take care of yourself. And, and as I said before, you know, as Gandhi has said and Muji and Jesus and Buddha and all these amazing, amazing, amazing people who have all taught you that the power, the way to the truth, the way to the Father, the way to the kingdom uh, uh, is through you, not attachment, right? Letting go of the materialistic objects, letting go of the belief at, that that's what you're here for and realizing that you are that everything, everything, everything that, that has You are everything. I, I say to people sometimes, like, like, and I don't know if some people really understand how much I mean this. If you didn't wake up this morning, none of this would exist. Would it? If you did not wake up this morning, would all of this be here? And for those of you who would sit here and say, of course it would, because my grandmother died last month and we're still here. How do you know? And no, for you, this wouldn't be here. I truly believe if there was only one person on this planet, all of this wouldn't exist. Only what we would see in front of us is what would exist. And the reason everything exists, the reason we have this whole universe is because you and me and this whole planet are all seeing and projecting and being here at this one point. We are these conduits of energy that let this entire grid, this entire projected reality and universe and beyond be in existence. And not just us humans, every life form out there. Because my friends, we are so not alone. There is so much life out there. It is just infinite. It does not stop. Like, once creation initially started, it just self-replicating, like birth and simulations and everything. It just does not stop. We are a part of something that is so far beyond human comprehension uh, uh, that we let the limitations of the human mind be what we define everything with. It's impossible. It's impossible. We're here to experience life as a human so we only get just enough of our celestial energy to be a human. Just like when you were here as a cow. You are only able to be a cow. Just like when you were an ant. You only just got enough just to be an ant and understand that. That's why I don't eat animals. That's why I don't eat animals. I, I truly believe that every single living thing, on, well, I don't believe, I know every single living thing 
And existence is a part of existence in itself. And we experience and replicate and, 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 and I mean, think of this. You're an infinite, energetic being that has awareness. You're not just going to want to experience life as a human. You have been so many other things, so many other things. That's why sometimes you can, I mean, I can sit down and close my eyes and be a worm crawling through the ground or a bird flying through the trees. I could be a cloud flying on, just floating over the planet, and so can you. And oftentimes we pawn these off to, to imagination, and who knows? How come I can see ancient Rome and ancient Egypt so well? I can see palm trees and I can feel the sand on my feet. I mean, I can feel the sun on my face. Imagination or not, I know I have traveled far beyond my mind. And, and back to what I was just saying, this is why I do these videos every day. People think I'm crazy. They're like, why don't you charge people? You, you spend hours a day writing and connecting and chatting with people and stuff. And, and, and it's just not what I'm here for. There's enough spiritual entrepreneurs. They're not spiritual teachers. They're not spiritual messages. If they come with a price tag, they are a spiritual entrepreneur. They are using, let's put it right down to the bottom like it is, the raw truth. They are using, if they really have it, their divine energy, their divine knowing, something that is absolutely already yours and charging you for it, to teach you how to access it rather than just telling you and showing you. I mean, so for me, I don't need your money. I don't. I make my own money. My family's fine. We've got food on the table, a roof over our head, dogs, tortoise. I'm all good. <laughs> uh, and I really do have two tortoises, three dogs, three children, and a wife. And I live in Connecticut. Uh, and on that note, everybody, um, you know what? I, I really appreciate you all being here. And, and just before you go... I don't know if you know this, but the page, if you are following my page, the page you're following me on is a new page. It's a month old. I had a TikTok page. I had it for months and months and months. And finally, it started doing really good. It got up to 44,000 uh, uh, followers. And then I did the stupid monetization verification. I got approved for it. It logged me out. I had no idea what the password was. I couldn't get back in. TikTok support was useless. So I started this new page, this new page. And as I just said, it took me months, months, months to get that other page to 44,000 people. And this page has been up for just over four weeks. And we're minutes away from reaching 50,000 people in four weeks. And the last thing I'll say to you tonight, if you don't believe that you're here with a purpose and that things you felt and believed as a child were true, I can assure you of this. I was born in 1968. Rotary phones at best, tube TVs, eight track tapes, and maybe cassette tapes when I was a kid. That was about the best. No beepers, no cell phones, no internet, nothing like that. Everybody used to say, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to do when you grow up? And I used to say all the time, I just want to talk to everybody. I just want to find a way to talk to everybody on the planet. And I'm sitting here right now. I made a post uh, uh, maybe about a month ago, well, or on a new page, maybe about three weeks ago. Where are you from? And thousands, thousands of you commented. And you're from everywhere. And I can't even tell you how happy that kid is. Because you literally are the dream come true for me. So thank you so much for being here. And know, if there is anything I can ever do for you, please send me a private message here on TikTok. Send me one on my Instagram. I check Instagram uh, religiously. And the and this, uh, it's hard, man. There's hundreds of messages here. And you can also contact me through my site, which again, there's dozens of messages. And I'm a one-man show. It's just me. So if there's something really, really terrible going on in your life and I'm not getting back to you fast enough, I'm so sorry. Um, 
I'm about to start something where I'm going to be able to have you guys text message me and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll get there over the next couple of weeks. But just keep following along. Keep uh, listening. And most importantly, please believe in yourself. You've doubted yourself long enough. It's time to believe, okay? That's all I want you to do is believe in yourself. Everybody, thank you so much. I absolutely love you. Have a beautiful evening. I'll see you all very soon. Take care.